All right, I rescued another little machine. It was literally in a scrap metal tub headed for the scrap yard when I found it. So let's get it unloaded. check it out so what we have here is a walk behind roller for using when you're rolling you know rock ca6 you know gravel whatever the heck you're doing sand or putting down a base below you know retaining wall or for asphalt was another big thing these are used for probably mainly used for asphalt just due to its ability to really pound but this is an Ingersoll Rand SX-17 with a Robin EW-20 gasoline engine on it. So, I know literally nothing about it. So we're going to dive into this thing together. We're going to figure out what we have here and what it's going to need to get to the point where it can be usable. So I found this thing in a scrap metal bin. It was literally being scrapped, and so 
I basically was like, oh, can I have that? And they're like, yeah, they wanted like 20 bucks for it or something. I was like, okay, sold. And so we lifted it out of the bin. I wish I had had some footage of that, but it was kind of a random event. It happened very quickly and I'd rather save it <laughs> than have the footage. So it has the ability to, it's automatic, so it will go forward and reverse. And apparently it, it is a, um, there's a vibrator inside the roller that actually is a vibratory compactor, not just a roller with weight on it. So, which makes it way more useful. Very, very compact size. I mean, we're talking probably 28, 30 inches wide. Um, it's got a hook hanger here, a couple of them there, a couple on the other side. So it could easily be slung by, you know, an excavator or, you know, some sort of a forklift or loader or whatever, skid steer. Um, the story they told me and the reason it got thrown in the uh, scrap metal bin is that the motor's junk. So I say we start with that. Like I told you, I, I know nothing about it. I, I see stuff like, you know, here's the pull cord, it's off. So obviously nobody could even try it. I couldn't try pulling it over. I had no idea if it's got compression. But what I do know is it's pretty small little, probably five horsepower engine maybe. Let's see. And I don't know its year, but this right there says something to the effect of 1995 to 1998 California emissions. So it has to be at least a 1998 model. It cannot be older than that because that date would not be here otherwise. Um, oh, here we go. What do we got? It's an EY20D. 3.7 horsepower maybe at 4,000 RPM or that's kilowatt. I, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's metric and uh, us Americans we have no idea how to deal with any of that. So if you know how many horsepower this is, leave it in the comments. I'd love to know. Probably a, a three and a half to five, I'd say, just based on its size. So looks like we've got. It can't be an oil filter, so that's got to be a hydraulic filter. Okay, yeah, hydraulic oil right here. That must be our oil dipstick. Let's see if we've got any of that. Threads are wet. It looks like maybe it's just barely touching the tip of the stick. Insert your joke here. And then, yeah, there's our spark plug. So yeah, this absolutely has got to be a hydraulic oil filter for the hydraulic side of things. Um, one of these cables, see this cable here is for your forward neutral reverse. And I'm betting this cable is for the throttle. Yep, throttle lever, idling, driving, driving, or both driving and vibrating. Okay, so you can, you can move it without the vibrator coming on. Um, I do know that this handle basically uh, allows you to have any of those detents so you can, you can move the handle to different spots when you're wanting to store it or lift it or, or whatever, but then you can adjust how you want it for uh, when you're going to operate it. I mean, there's like the handlebars bent. I'll bet you that happened when they dumped it in the dumpster. Um, some of this, this uh, like follow roller, I would say maybe you call it a stabilizer. Um, it's bent there, it's bent there. Some sort of a patch on these support pieces there, no big deal. Somebody, I don't know what they did with the, with the paint, but there's like, like different stripes of paint. Like blacks and on this other side, I think there's like a brown. Yeah, like some sort of a primer across the motor. I don't know if that was a marking their equipment kind of thing. Like some companies will do that on job sites just to see if something was messed with or moved. I usually you do it on whatever contacts the ground, like the roller itself, because then eventually it wears off. You'll see that on like dozers and stuff like that that get left on big job sites. But, and then I initially thought, oh man, great, wonderful. I got to find a cap for the, for the fuel tank. And like I was like oh no where in the heck am I gonna find that cap well that's not a fuel tank fuel tanks here this is a water tank I believe 
I do not know how or, okay, so it's right there. It's empty. So there's no attachment. And I believe that would have been used for a machine that they would use this roller for asphalt. And so it would have had some sort of a sprayer attachment that this tank would then spray or drizzle water down on that uh, roller to be able to um, keep the asphalt from sticking to it as they're rolling it. So, yeah, it's definitely a, an awesome little unit. So let's, let's jump into the engine and see if we've got compression. I really wanna start there. Again, like they said, the engine's junk. Let's find out. To really know how good this engine is, we gotta get into the, to the crank here and see whether or not we've got the ability to make compression. That recoil might be broken, I don't know, but. But we'll mess with that later. All right, what do you think the chances are we got compression in there? Or at least, whatever. Okay, we're not locked up. Okay, I'm hearing something. Oh yeah, we've got compression. Are you kidding? Did this thing get scrapped just because the pull cord broke? Yeah. I think we've got lots of compression. Huh. Okay. <laughs> well, that's awesome. All right, well, let's see. I say we see if we have spark. Find that out. So I'm gonna put a nut or a socket on this nut and we'll turn the engine over, pull the spark plug out, and see if we got sparkles. Dang, that's tight. Doesn't look bad. Carbon up a little bit, but that plug actually looks really nice. All right, you look right there. Tell me if we've got spark. Okay, no spark. Uh, oh, it would help if it was on. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Come on. I guess I'll just hold it. I know I'm going to get shocked, but... All right. You look right there. Oh, yeah, we got spark. Beautiful. Boom. Spark and compression. All this thing needs is air and fuel. And I think we can give both of those. Might as well pop off air cleaner and see what it looks like. Not bad. Dirty, but... Old. Oh yeah, there's a... The remnants of the pre-filter. These, these pre-filter filters, they literally always turn to dust. Every single one. And then what's this? Oh yeah. Uh, I guess that seals that. Or something. Okay, so... Yeah, I can kind of see in there. That car was not looking great. 
but I think what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of gas down the spark plug hole, put that back in, we'll see if it fires. A little mixed gas. See if I can snake it in there. Oh yeah, definitely flooded it. On. There we go. fired but because I didn't have the the right uh, kind of clutch driven thing on the on the drill the drill stopped it yeah heck yes awesome all right well Sorry guys, but the motor wasn't junk. They just broke the pull cord. Oh well. All right. Well, probably should have checked this before, but let's see if this motor has any oil in it. Oh yeah, perfect. It's like right at the opening. It's definitely black so it needs to get changed but and I'm not sure if this is the style you have to unscrew and then stick it in and then whatever it says or if it's threading in all the way and then pulling it out so I don't know do you know on these little robin engines do I check it by pulling it out wiping it and then sticking it in not threading it in and then checking the oil or do I thread it all the way in and all the way out and then look at it I think if I do it not based on the threads, it gets me literally right at the crosshatch on that stick. So, yeah, let me know. All right, what should we do next? I'm kind of thinking we look in the fuel tank, kind of see what it, we see there, and then maybe go head on into the carburetor and try and figure out, you know, if that's going to be clean or dirty. So, let's get a light and we'll look down in the gas tank. Oh, nice. You even got the old uh, strainer in there. Screen. It's actually pretty clean. Can't see everywhere, but see down in there? Most of the tank looks just like that. Slight bit of residue in there, but all in all, it's fairly clean. Well, that's good. Maybe that gives me hope that the carburetor is. All right, to make it easier to work on that area, I'm gonna take this uh, water tank off. Start uh, pulling this carb apart. It's a little dirty, but I mean, everything looks fairly good. That line right there is so hard that it won't even budge, so we're going to delete it and put a new piece on. Can't even find the separation between the two of them. Oh man. Oh, rock, rock solid. Let 
There we go. Now our carb should just come right out. Made in Japan. That's a Makuni carb. That's good. Those are good, well made carbs. Everything's free. Let's, uh, let's clean this up a little bit and then we'll take a look at it. So this is our throttle. So it went like that. And then the spring also hooked in there like that ish so Much cleaner. So let's pop this thing open. And we'll take a look. All in all, though, it's looking pretty good. Although we have no idea what it looks like inside. So let's open it up and we'll go from there. All right, let's look in this. Check out this bowl. dirty in there but not terrible There's our needle. Float seems fairly intact, pretty good shape. Definitely, uh, that tube is clogged. Alright, I'm going to do some cleaning on this, and then we'll pup, put it back together and give it a try. Alright, I got the carb all blown out, cleaned out, so let's, uh, let's check this float and make sure it's working right. So, just blow, right through there, you can hear airflow. If we... So what I'm doing is I'm basically just lifting this bowl or the float in the bowl up enough to see if that seat, which is right in there, will actually stop flow. So if it'll stop air, it'll stop the fluid. So that's good. The only thing I'm really kind of concerned about, because I don't have a carb kit for this, is this gasket here. We'll run it, we'll see what happens. 
this uh, bowl cleaned up pretty nice so it really wasn't in that bad of shape um, I've seen a lot worse so we'll go with this and find out what happens huh what do you think place your bets carb gonna leak Okay, we'll try that. I did find a number on it. It's a it's a Manuki 204-707, maybe 701 X822. So everything moved free. So yeah, should be good to go. Let's try it. Alright, so the gasket for this carburetor for the the filter side, which would be this one, it just disintegrated when I was cleaning this. So I gotta make a new one of those. This is the gasket that goes on this side, and I might as well make a new one of those. So let's do that now. I don't really wanna hammer on this. All right, so instead of hammering this one out, I'm just gonna trace it and cut it out. Not my favorite method, but it will work. We'll get that cut out and then we will put the holes in it. Maybe I will hammer these holes in. All right, there we go. There's our gasket. Do a little bit more fine tuning. I'm gonna clean up a little bit and should be good to go. I'll make one more for this side, which is a little more simple. Doesn't have the additional holes or notches, so. All right, so this line, this hard fuel line here that we had to cut, it's just rock solid. It just snaps. So let's get a piece. Same size. That'll do. Do a little bit of basic cleaning here. main reasons to do this is because clearly we have an oil leak somewhere and so if we can clean it up enough that once we have it running it'll make it a heck of a lot easier to spot where that oil is coming from I think it's coming from underneath this cover here um, something to do with the hydraulics um, although there is quite a bit of buildup right here at the bottom of the engine and it was kind of coming down so it could have been coming out of this breather tube possibly maybe we should get a new piece for that yeah we probably ought to put a new breather tube on it but um but we'll get as much of this out of here as we can i'm not going to pressure wash it at this time but i do want to be able to kind of see any new leaks or any existing leaks Alright, 
put this thing back together. So one thing I like to do with gaskets is kind of coat them with a little bit of grease. Kind of helps uh, cover any of the imperfections in the gasket or the mating surfaces. And just makes it easier to disassemble later. All right, before we go too much further, I decided to pull off the, um, the fuel shutoff. And it's got like a little sediment bowl here. So basically this is coming out of the tank like that. And fuel goes through this shutoff and then out through here. But there's a little sediment trap that well, I haven't seen yet. Oh yeah, glad we opened that. Look at this. Look at all that sand. <laughs> That's not going to be good for it. All those fairly clean. <laughs> so, yeah, basically closed, open, closed. So I'm going to blow this out with a little bit of air. We'll make sure it's clean, make sure it's free. And we'll stick it back in there with our new chunk of fuel line and then we should be good to bolt this baby back up I did get the governor and the governor spring put back in so yeah we're almost there I don't think that tube went anywhere. What's that one for? Here's our new gasket. All right, engine is all put back together. Now what I want to dive into is, I want to figure out what this glued on piece of plastic is. So, plus there's a leak underneath this cover. So I think we're going to take this bolt, a couple handle bolts, and a couple bolts on the back. Should be able to lift this cover off. We might have to take these two handle bolts off. Well, that's broken. That tab wasn't holding anything. What is going on here? Oh, that is a bolt. Are you kidding me? Oh, I just have to take this one off. I seriously thought I had to take this whole cover off. There we go. Alright, well, there we got the cover off finally. 
So it looks like there's like a, a clutch or something in here, probably RPM based, that as it's spinning, as this is spinning, it's probably got weights that kick out and engage with this cover or this, uh, I don't know, shaft probably. And then in doing that, when the RPM's high enough, it then basically kicks on this hydraulic pump through the belt and then a shaft over to here. And it looks like there's another weighted roller of some kind that probably engages with something in this side cover to engage the vibration. So where it's leaking, not quite sure yet, but let's get some of this gunk out of here. needs a pressure washing but I do not want to do that right now the other thing that's happening is this uh, throttle cable is not wanting to move it's a uh, rusted in place or it's broken or something so I haven't messed with it yet Like we got a, a Dakin hydraulic pump of sorts. I'm not familiar with that brand, but that's our number. So I'm looking through this thing over, looking for kind of where the oil's leaking, and I might have found it. Right above the hydraulic oil filter is this fitting. I don't, I don't, I don't know. What do you think? I don't think it should be like that. Maybe just a a tad bit tighter so it, it best case it's just loose worst case it's stripped out either way we could put a helicoil in it if it, is, if it is bad i'm going to take this line off thread this in tighter and then hopefully still be able to get this on uh we'll find out i guess I feel like I still got some threads in there, maybe. Let's pull it out and look at it. Oh no, it's fine. I think I'll put some new uh, thread sealant on it. Clean this up a little bit. Probably do the same with this. Yeah, I think it's good. Never seen a plastic line used like that. Oh well. Alright, cool. Well, maybe that's the leak. Don't know. Alright, I got all these cleaned up. Oh wait, there's a crack right there in that tube, that hose. Well, that'll do it. I literally didn't notice that. Alright, so I, I had taken this apart. Sprayed some of these things down with penetrating oil just to just to kind of lube up all the moving components, but I'm trying to eliminate all the leak potentials and that crack. I I wonder if there's enough tube to actually come back a little past it. I doubt it. So I got to figure out what to use. I don't know what that stuff is. Hmm. Oh, this whole line is bad. Yeah, I gotta replace that whole thing. Do I even try without facing that first? That upper line. Well, there's a some sort of a part number on that hose. Yeah, there's another big crack at the bottom. 
I'll bet you a lot of the hydraulic oil is leaking right from this. Well, I think what we'll do tonight is I was going to add some fluid, a few other things. I don't think we're going to do that. We're just going to get this line off. Let's see if I can figure something out to replace this hose with. And if we can't, we'll go from there. We'll go find something tomorrow. Another option is Oh, I thought maybe that this filter was... No. The oil probably comes... down through the tank. Through the filter. Out the hose, into the pump, and then returns back and dumps back in. So I do need to figure something out on this. So you see... big old cracks. A big old crack right down there and then the whole underside is just cracking apart so gotta figure out a replacement for that probably I'll do this one too alright as far as those lines go the only thing I can find I've got this automotive PB550 not sure what it's for looks like an airline of some kind maybe it's not flexible enough but I have this semi-truck airline. It's a chunk of used airline. It's plenty flexible. And so, for this moment, I already made one of them. So this line here basically fits onto, I stuck some caps on these for tonight, here and here on these barbs. And then it compresses into this nut here. And so it's a compression style fitting. I do not believe this is a fix. I do not believe it should be done this way. I only believe this is what I've got right now. So I need to figure out what this line is. It's got some markings on it. It says uh, Chiyoda AH6 6x9085. No idea what any of those measurings markings mean, but I'm going to take it home and do some Google interwebbing and figure out if I can't find something local that I could buy. If I can't, absolutely, at least I've kind of test fit that airline. It will compress into it. It actually fits really well and flexes really nicely. That is probably doable for now, and at least until we know how functional this machine is. And that's the big thing here. I'm trying not to spend any money until I find out if the guts of that roller operate the way they should. Because if they don't, then, you know, we have an engine that can fire. That's all we know right now. We know that the engine will fire. Beyond that, we found a hydraulic leak, we found some broken lines, we found some loose fittings. I do know that, uh, like, for instance, this, this throttle, or this, uh, forward reverse mechanism it's all free all the way through the cable but the throttle barely moves and so I've been soaking some uh, penetrating oil down the cable there's this spot on the cable here that's like bulged and so I don't know if maybe the wire got out of the actual sleeve and bound up in there it will not go all the way to idling it's definitely not making its full travel and when I look here which is where it should be showing or moving um, this doesn't move this throttle mechanism on the engine so absolutely worst case we disconnect the throttle there and then we manually operate it until I can figure out a fix or find a replacement but both these smaller belts look great so does the upper one I don't see any major dry rot in them um, there's just not a lot to go wrong with this little thing. Uh, so, the engine, we're not going to call it good. We're going to call it ready to try. So, the next step, we're going to be putting fuel in the tank. And then we're going to add some hydraulic fluid. Figure out what we're doing about these two lines. We'll get that line in. 
I have no idea who makes that filter. It says uh, 4S01. And so, obviously right now, I'm not touching it. We're gonna leave it alone. I wanna bend this handle straight just because it annoys me. Same with this throttle handle. I'll bet you a million bucks those, uh, those got bent when they dumped it into the, the dumpster. They literally just took a wheel loader and just scooped it and dumped it. And I wasn't there for that part. I was there for using the same wheel loader to pull it back out. Um, but I wanna see if it operates. That's the goal here. It's like I said, it's, this machine is absolutely worthless if it doesn't do what it should. And I don't know if I can even get parts for that roller or that mechanism to begin with. So that's why we gotta start with that. That's why I'm okay trying this airline in here as our temporary hydraulic line while I figure out that, um, the actual line we need. So we're gonna jump into that next and we'll see what we can do as far as getting it up and running. I think it should be, I, I really have good, good, good thoughts on this. I truly believe it's gonna just fire up and run awesome. Um, especially if we sort out some of these, these leaks. I think some of the engine oil leaks were definitely leaking right around both. There's actually two dipsticks. One there and one on the other side. I mean, I think they did it that way so that this engine could be put on a million different things because these were, these Robin engines were on all kinds of stuff. I actually had a, a plate compactor with a Robin engine on it, almost identical to this. Japanese made, man, I'm telling you, Japanese made engines from that time period were very, very well made. Um, and if we get it up and running, maybe we'll do a new fuel tank. Maybe we'll, you know, pretty it up, put some paint on it. I don't know, but this point it's just putting lipstick on a pig and you know, let's figure out if this pig wants to do what it's told. So I went to the hydraulic shop and wouldn't you know, the only line they had that will work is another chunk of brake line, air brake line. Same as what I already made that first one out of. So we'll go ahead and throw this in there and we'll try it. I don't know where to get braided. It's like quarter inch ID, maybe like three eighths inch OD um, tubing. This has got to be low pressure. I mean, that hydraulic pump is not making a ton. So we'll reuse these two fittings. And then the other one is on the machine still. So we'll just cut a chunk there. So. so you push this end on. And then this end feeds down into that hole. And then this will push right down in there and we'll screw it on. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick some uh, thread sealant. I know I don't need it there, but might as well do it while I'm in here. Not gonna hurt anything. Way too much. Just how I like it though. Rather wipe it off than, you know, not have enough. All right, get that tightened. We'll go put it on the machine. So I'm going to take this fitting off just to reseal it. Put some Teflon tape and some seal paste in there. Probably don't need to, but it'll be so quick to do it right now. And then later, I'm not like wondering if there's a, a leak in that spot. Take the tape. And I know each of these individually will do the same thing, but I just prefer to do both. That's how I do pretty much any airline, any air fitting. Any 
and some hydraulic fittings like this one. Not a lot of tubes are that flexible. That thing is, uh, <laughs> that thing's great. Arrgh. Work it. <laughs> Could probably use a little heat on this, but I'm gonna try and do it without it. kinked on me. I think I'm going to make a little bit of a bigger one. You get the idea. All right, let's mess with this uh, recoil, see if we can get it figured out. So on the other side of this, there's going to be a big spring that, uh, big coil of a spring that would essentially pull the cord back in. So you'd loop your pull cord through this hole. You'd tie it into this notch here and then knot it and then when you pull it it has these little teeth that spring out like that and then those contact the flywheel on the motor turning it over and then when it retracts it sucks those back in so it should it's going this way or pulling it out so this should either wind it up or it's broken in there. And it's feeling like it's broken because it's not, sometimes when the cord breaks, you get the ability to wind this up, feed the cord in, put it back through, tie a knot, and then boom, you're ready to go. It's not working that way. So let's take it apart. Let's see what we're working with in there. Well, it doesn't look broken. It looks like it came off. Maybe, I think this little notch there should jump into that groove right there. Let's see if we can do that, put that back in there without having everything blow up on us. I don't know what this is supposed to look like in here. I know how it should work, but I'm going to mess with this some more and uh, I'll bring it back when I have it broken. All right. After some messing around, I, uh, I got it. So it's winding up. So we're going to feed this. Hopefully we got enough still. I'm going to give it a couple of winds 
before I feed the string in. Bingo. All right, now we'll take this, tie a knot in the end. Such a thick pull cord rope. Not sure if I can get a more than just one loop. I might, uh, I'm gonna grab a torch. We're gonna melt that a little bit. All right, let's see if this works. So far so good. Beautiful. So spring here and here. Before we fight with that last one, let's just make sure it works. Sweet. Next up, I want to address the throttle cable because it does not want to move very far. So I'm thinking I'm going to loosen it here and try and figure out what's going on in this area because um, it's not throttling. It's not doing the thing. So I think it's bound up somewhere in the cable. Yeah, like there's some cracking in the cable here, which is how water could have gotten in. Not to mention these rubber boots could have been up, water could have gotten in there. Working now? No. Something did break though. Alright, got it unhooked from the motor. Okay, so the cable broke. Or that. So it was seized up in this thing right here. Wunderbar. Okay, well, that's wonderful. All right, well, there was absolutely no way to save that cable. I was beating on it and trying to get that, that cable to go through the sleeve here, and then it bird's nested on me, and so, yeah, I absolutely need a new cable for that. Um, so, it is what it is. That's what happens sometimes when it sits outside. Let's fill this up with hydraulic fluid. I've got a little bit in that container there. Okay, we're on the stick now. Now we're not. <laughs> Maybe we need more fluid than I thought. We're not even on the stick yet second I thought we were, and then we're not. Must be filling up some of the passages down below it. Alright, 
<clears throat> I got it perfectly at the line right there. So that's full. Once we get this running and run it for a little while, then I'll find whatever filter I need for this and we'll change out the probably one or two quarts of hydraulic fluid this whole thing has in it. Maybe it's more than that, I don't know. It probably took two of those little trays or that little cup thing I had, so. All right, I think about the only thing that I'd like to do before we start it is, uh, I'm not gonna mess with this lever at all, but I will, I wanna figure out a way to adjust the throttle here. It's free here, so that cable was definitely the problem. So I'm gonna see if I've got a throttle cable somewhere that I could just mount in here. All right, so here's uh, my throttle cable. I literally just cut the old one. The sleeve on the inside was completely uh, seized up, so I pulled it out. So now I just got this leaning against this bolt here. It's tied back into the throttle. And so I can just, just do it like that. And I know there's gonna be a belt spin in here, but I don't really have any other options at the moment. I need to buy a whole nother throttle, throttle cable anyway. But this will at least allow me to control it now, because I wanna I want to start it. So let's uh, put some fuel in it and see what happens. All right, putting in ethanol-free mixed gas. I would prefer a little, little extra lubrication. So it'll smoke a little bit more than it normally would. I'm okay with that. There we go. Let's see what we can do. On. <laughs> uh, broke, broke the pull cord. That, that, that rope was just no good. It did not break down there at my knot either. Well, <laughs> we know it runs. We also know that it was running on full choke and I forgot to take the choke off. That's why it wasn't throttling up. For a second there, I thought maybe there's something in the lower end of the motor, and I still don't know yet. So I need to get this off again, put a new cord or new uh, rope in there, and then we can try it again. Not sure. Oh, we're leaking some gas. I see right here. I think that was just t loose. Maybe I forgot to tighten that. We'll go with that. So at the other shop, I know I have some uh, pull cord and possibly even some replacement pull cords, but I don't have it here. So I found, got some paracord. And this should do it, at least for now. Yeah. 
Here it is. Spring, 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 spring. Move that thing again. There it is. I had to like break off the end of this before. Like that. These springs are not not easy to fix when the end hook breaks off. But and you don't want to heat them, then they lose their elasticity. Broke again. So if this thing runs well, I'd say a new recoil is uh, in store. I can get them. Ooh. Uh oh. There goes all the little components. <laughs> I'm gonna again bring you back when I fix this. So here's what starts happening when you start trying to bend a new hook on these uh, recoil springs. See all these little pieces? You need that tight little curl to be able to hook into this piece right here or wherever many different recoils have different, different spots to hook. So you go to bend it. And you're thinking, oh, cool, I'm getting it. Awesome. Nice. And you need just a little bit more, right? It's not quite enough, so you go do one of these. Oh, dang it. See? I literally was still trying to make that a hook, not just show you. But they just, it's just brittle. It's spring steel. It, it, you know, I mean, it's built that way. It's strong in its one direction. You bend it past that and it'll snap. So, are there any tricks out there for making hooks? I did try actually heating it to uh, soften the metal. It did not help. It literally just softened the metal. So, all right, let's try this again. Choke on, fuel on. We're gonna give it, we're gonna put it on idle. We have no pull cord, so we're still on on here. We're gonna try this. Look right here. No more sparks. We lost our spark. Why did we do that? Let's see if that spark plug. Put something else metal in there. Oh, well, we got spark here. We got good spark. Okay, let's try that spark plug again. It could be this is broken somewhere. There we go. Alright. Not quite sure what's going on, but let's put that back in there.
choke. It's gotta be fuel. Let's let's double check its fuel by putting some fuel in the uh, spark plug hole. We'll try and fire it up then. Okay, if this thing fires, then we know we've got a fuel issue. make you go hmm yeah I think we got plenty of compression the on off switch is on we're getting spark I put it down the throat and we're not getting fire now maybe it's an intermittent issue with that spark plug or an intermittent issue with the plug wire. Let's try a new plug. Let's see if I've got one. All right, I don't have exactly right, but I do have this auto light. It should work. Let's try it outside it first. <laughs> Lots of sparkles right there. All right, let's try that. <laughs> well, maybe that spark plug was part of the issue. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so there is for sure still potentially the carburetor is dirty or something, but it wants to move and it vibrates. Heck yes.
awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so pumped. So, it runs. The forward and reverse function works. The vibrating compactor part works. There's definitely still some issues in the carburetor. I either need to get a kit or I need to take it back out and clean it because it could have stuff from the this fuel tank. We didn't clean it, we just looked in it. So that's gonna have to be opened back up. I need to get a throttle cable that's not this pair of vice grips. Um, and then now that we got it hot, I think it's time to change the oil. So we'll get that all dumped out, put some new stuff in it. And since it's nice and warm, it's probably been running for like 10 or 15 minutes now. And I just shut it off with the carburetor. So I just basically turned off the fuel and let the carburetor run at least mostly dry because I know we're going to be getting into that. So yeah, buddy, I'm excited that it runs. So this thing's worth spending some time on now. Now we know it operates. We know the engine works. We just need to do some TLC to it. So let's start with the oil and we'll go from there. All right, here's our drain for this motor. That was a terrible idea. Oh, come on, had to roll right through. A little rust protection is what we're doing here. I wasn't going to do this now, but I decided this hydraulic system probably has so little oil in it that it would just make perfect sense to just change it now take this filter off, then I can figure out what kind of filter I need to go get. So let's pull that filter off, and I got a little bit better set up here to catch the oil, uh, rather than what you saw before. It's kind of milky. It means there might be a little water in it. So, probably a good thing we did this. Yeah, there is, there's some water in it, I can see some. So this filter housing here, it had this pipe thread just threaded in there. And the problem is, if I thread this all the way in, it literally blocks the oil passage. And I don't want that to accidentally happen, so I cleaned this. This side is probably the one I'm gonna use to, we're gonna install it with basically red Loctite. So I'm going to get some brick clean. We're going to clean that out. Try and get those threads all dry. Probably good right there. So we'll let that set and uh, seal up. The other thing is the filter on this machine. Since this is a hydraulic system, usually they have an, a seal right here. So there's the outer one, and the inner one is basically made to keep pressure from bypassing the threads and if that happens it literally totally bypasses the filter and so therefore you're not getting the cooling I'm sorry you're not getting the protection of the filter filtering the oil as it comes through you're just getting it when whatever does go through and so if it bypasses the threads of on the filter itself and filter housing your your system isn't staying as clean as it should be so Obviously, that's not a good thing in the long run. I don't know if this is a high enough PSI unit to really have that matter any. I don't think this is the original filter. All it has on it says 4S01. Sure looks like a Fram, but 
there's no fram number on it. So I may try and find a specific filter for a hydraulic system and see if I can get one that will have an O-ring that meets here and here. Um, I should probably do that now. So I'm probably gonna go look at that. I gotta go pick up some oil for this as well. Um, so when I come back, I'll have something to screw on here, whether it's right or it's wrong. I don't know. But this has so little hydraulic oil in it that it would take nothing to change again. So here you can see the oil, hydraulic oil, it's milky, which is usually a sign that water's mixed in. And then you see those droplets there? Those are water. Some of the brown is probably from oil that was already in this thing, so... But that milky color definitely came out of the machine, so it's actually a really, really good thing that we did this. So I'm, I'm happy about it. Plus, I mean, look at that. There's maybe a quart, maybe a quart at best of hydraulic fluid in it. So we're not wasting our time doing this. And there's our engine oil, just dirty. Who knows if it's ever been changed. I don't see any milky flakes in it. It doesn't look like water is in it or coolant or anything. Well, <laughs> it's air cold engine. <laughs> there's nothing in it that shouldn't be in it is what I'm trying to say. Get it? I, you, you know, come on. I, you get it, right? It's not bad. It's just dirty. All right, let's put some oil in this old dog. So we got 10W30, the Castrol, Castrol brand. Whatever, it'll be fine. Found a Wix. It's a 51361. It will work. And I don't know if there's supposed to be a seal on the inside on this one or not, but I did find this O ring that will. If I can get it on there. That will go over this fine. And then we'll see if this wants to seal up well. I don't see any problem with that. So we're going to leave it like that. better. It's got like a little S curve in it now, but good enough for the junk that I own. Another thing that actually shouldn't matter is this hand grip, but um, I have a couple and I was able to get this one off. And I've got there slightly different, but it's pretty much the same. So like that so I'm gonna do the same on the other side we're gonna take this one off even though it's still fine just to have them matching and then I'll keep these two in my drawer of things in case I need a grip for something else mortal sin for tools is to hit them with hammers but
Good thing I have lots of tools. Bingo. Perfect. Ready for all the vibrations. It does make it look nicer. If they start coming loose, I'll throw some glue in the grips, but for now I'm just going to leave them pushed on. Alright, let's fire this back up. Turn the fuel on. Get my starting drill. Oh, the wrong way. And just like that. <laughs> I thought we were going to be low on hydraulic oil. All right, bingo. We are right at the line. Perfect. We'll check on that a couple more times just to make sure. So what you saw me just doing was listening to, there's some sort of a tick. And I thought maybe the engine was ticking. I thought maybe a bearing somewhere was going out. So what you can do with any piece of metal, this happens to be just a screwdriver, is you put your ear to it. It's kind of like a stethoscope for engines or working on stuff. And you use that sound and you can start to determine exactly where the problem is. And I thought, because there's obviously a spinning bit there, spinning bit here, spinning bit there. But in this mechanism, there's a clutch here that engages with a shaft that runs to this. And when the RPM gets high enough, this clutch will then engage the drum and be the, engage the vibratory roller. So the tick at really low idle is the only time you can hear it, really, really low. So when you are, you know, accelerate, increase the RPMs, it goes away, but it doesn't really go away. The tick just gets a higher pitch and you can't quite hear it. And so when I increase the RPMs, I still heard the tick right here. And I'm pretty sure that bearing right there is either bad or there's some sort of clutch mechanism in there that I don't know about, or I haven't, you know, I'm not familiar with this machine at all. I've never worked on one of these. Um, so I might, See what it takes to get into this, and worst case scenario, we replace a bearing, right? I mean, that's not a big deal at all, and I'd rather do it now before it gets bad. Because one thing about rollers of any kind, they just beat themselves to death. That's what they do. And, you know, vibrations with any machine, it essentially is very bad uh, and causes a lot of wear and tear on a machine. And so if you've ever run rollers, they tend to break, and when they break, they break big time. Um, I don't want that to happen to this machine, and so if I can isolate maybe that bearing right there is, is going bad now and replace it for whatever heck it costs, then in the long run I am money ahead by far. Plus, I don't plan on using this machine in a production setting anyway, so more than likely it would be fine, but I just struggle with that. I can't just leave things alone, and I know some people can, but um, I don't know. Either way, it is running mint. The engine still absolutely will not, will not uh, totally go up all the way in RPM, so we still have something going on in the carburetor. But the engine itself, beyond that carburetor, it is running awesome. When I listened to the engine, when I was hearing that sound, 
The engine just sounds as smooth as can be. Perfect. Right now, I think I'm going to dig back into the carb so that we can try and get our RPMs all the way up. Because if we do that, then we can go test it and play with it and actually see what it'll do. Because right now, all we know is that it runs, it vibrates, it moves. And we've done both the oils and the one filter on it. So let's dive into that carburetor one more time and see if we can figure something out on it. I got the carburetor off. And I figure while we're in here, we might as well pull the tank off and just clean it. I don't know what kind of dirt or debris in there, so I've already got it unbolted. We'll pull it off and we'll go rinse it out. All right, there's a little bit of fluid left in there from the gas I put in. Let's, let's open this up and see what it looks like. Not a lot. Let's take this off. Right. Yeah, we're definitely getting some dirt and debris. See all those little pieces in there? All that little stuff would definitely clog up a carb. So we're gonna probably put this back in there and then fill it probably with some gas, actual clean gas, shake it and then see what it looks like afterwards. This cap only wants to work if it's like perfectly centered. Because otherwise, one of the sides comes up. I'm betting maybe that dent there is what threw off the geometry there. Alright, I wiped out my Chinese container. Speaking of that, save your Chinese container, guys. Like, these are awesome for parts holding and stuff. And they have a lid, so you can cover stuff to keep it from getting dirty, or you can organize it. Plus, you're already paying for them anyway, you might as well wash them. And the lid's clear so you can see through it. Plus, this white background allows me to see, when I dump this out, I can tell a lot better what, what's going on in there. And I can see, you know, little dirt particles that you might not be able to see on another color. It's looking pretty dang clean already. Problem is, I wish I could put like an inline fuel filter, but there is no room, literally. There is absolutely nowhere to put one without changing the location of the carburetor or lifting the tank higher. I mean, there's a little bit of dirt coming out, but not a lot. So I'm gonna filter this through a rag just to keep any of the bigger dust particles up and then we'll reuse it. I'll throw it in something, it doesn't matter. All right, check it out. I got it back together. So I did clean the carburetor, got that all put back on, got the tank back on and everything's reassembled. And we're gonna find out if it works. I put the covers back on just because, you know, I've got hopes and dreams here. So let's fire it up and see if we've got a runner.
times I like leaving the bowl empty, so essentially I just run all the gasoline out of the engine so that you know you don't have that that sitting in the carburetor. Um, so by shutting the fuel off and not just shutting it off, I th I feel like it makes a big difference in the long run. But that's just how I do it. Lots of people have lots of ways. Well, we have a runner here. Not only does it run, but it works exactly as it should. We still have no throttle here. So I need to find a cable and that's this cable is all cut up because I was trying to find where it stopped being stuck in the sleeve. And so I got to have this style on one all the way down to an open end where it goes into the linkage for the throttle on the actual governor arm, uh, or actually that's not the governor arm, that is just the throttle arm. I still have that piece of cable kind of down here with the, with the vice grip, which is fine for now. It's not a good long-term solution, so I need to figure out how to get one of those cables. They're not exactly the easiest. There's tons of types. They're like parachute-style cables. Um, and so I gotta find one of those. This is a water tank. There is no cap for it that I have. So on my list of stuff to get, we've got the throttle cable, we've got an air filter, I'm gonna replace the air filter, and then maybe a water tank cap that has a five inch ID, inner dimension. I, I wanted something that would fit over this. It probably fit down in there, but then you'd have, you know, if this thing sat outside, water would be sitting right in that area. So maybe a, outer cap or inner cap, something to just make that look nicer. This is like, I'm calling the hood, and it has, there's a circle hole under this, and they glued this piece of plastic on here to, I, I don't know why, but if I could find a four and three quarter inch OD little plug or something, I could put that in there and make it look nicer. Past that, it doesn't need much. Um, maybe a coat of paint, maybe we, you know, there's a, this little like anti-roll arm, there's a break in the weld right here. Got to fix that possibly, dress it up. I don't know. I mean, maybe some new decals, probably not. Maybe a new fuel tank. Honestly, at this point, I'm not going to get a new one. It's working well. If it ever really starts having issues and I'm getting tons of carburetor problems, then maybe we'll get a new tank. I don't want to get a new carb. I could get a new carb but you can't get a new old stock one. I think I saw one on eBay that was new old stock and it was like 90 or hundred bucks and all of the aftermarket Chinese ones are made, I think they're like 15, 20 bucks, but nothing is better than the originals. And so I always try and clean and use the original carburetors if I can. They just are built better, they work better. Recoil needs to be fixed. I've got it put back together, but I bought a spring, technically actually bought two springs on eBay from a guy. I'm not sure which one I need, but they were like eight bucks a piece. All right, so I got the recoil spring for this pull cord in. I bought two, there's a guy on eBay that happened to have two new old stock springs for Robin engines. There's this big one and this little one here. And in looking at it, I'm pretty sure this little one's gonna be the ticket. So they've got these bands around them that kind of hold them. So I gotta pull the old one out, and there's a little hook here, a hook there, and then this inner hook hooks right there. Grab some pliers. Bingo, just like that. So we'll stick this in here. Cool, all right. Now we got these little arms, just the springs in them, stick that there. That there, and this cover goes right over the both of them.
So as it twists, those little uh, little feet kick out, little arms, and they grab the crank. All right, let's see if it'll fire right up. On, fuel on, choke. Here we go. Sweet, even our kill switch works. I've been shutting it off with the carburetor, but at least we know that works. It's running back out of out of uh, fuel there too. This baby runs, so all we have left to do is to take it out and pack some ground with it. So I've got some areas where we added some rock in the back to make some paths. All right, new filter for the air cleaner. So this is the old one. This is a brand new one. It's got this inner basically piece that was completely gone in this one and it has the pre-filter. So it's a Subaru, actual Subaru part. So I was able to get that. So that goes just like that. All right, beautiful. Stick that in there. That'll be our little uh, cap for the water tank. <laughs> what do you think, Scout? So for those of you that don't know, I have a whole pack of Weimaraners. And one of the biggest reasons you haven't seen them in many of the latest videos is I don't really have a safe place for them to be able to go outside and stay outside around this shop yet. At the other shop, I have fencing that literally encases the whole shop. So no matter if we're in the shop or out of the shop, if the doors are open, I don't have to worry about the dogs disappearing on me. And so here at this shop, about the only time I can keep a dog down here is if it's inside and I have the doors closed. The second we open the doors, they will obey and they do follow, but they're exploratory dogs. They want to go check out everything. So in the grand scheme of things, the plan is to completely encase the back and fencing or walls of some sort and once I have that done it'll be a lot easier to be able to bring them to the cave and and not worry about them taking off so but Scott's down here today so she's gonna help us uh put this thing to use all right Scout all right yeah oh hi hi you're a good girl all right let's get going
Okay, well, I think that thing did beautifully. For what it is, for what it weighs, it packed down this little path way better than letting gravity do it or letting nature take its course or just driving over it with stuff. Now, it's a small roller and it's only gonna do so much, but I think for asphalt work or even setting up the final grade for patios and retaining walls, that could be very, very useful. Um, it's very even, very consistent, easy to control back and forth. The one spot it doesn't do well is right along the edge here. Um, it just buries itself into the dirt and kind of makes it hard to control, which, I mean, any roller is going to do that. If the ground was harder and wasn't as muddy, we wouldn't have that issue. So I am very happy with it. So far, no issues with it since we've been running it. Perfect rescue at an amazing price for uh, what it is. These are not cheap machines to buy. I'm happy to have saved it from the scrapyard. Just one more machine rescued and saved here at Salvage Workshop. So for me, Scout here and all my other Weimariners, I truly appreciate you checking out this video and watching the channel. If you haven't, there's lots more to come on the cave build if you haven't checked out all of that series. We completely rebuilt the building that we're in right now and I still have more content that's going to be coming out for that. But from today, thanks for watching. I truly appreciate your time. Right, Scout? Right, 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 right? All right, let's go.